Okay, one second. I'm gonna bring up uh, Michaela in just one second. Let me get her, there she is. What's going on? How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Just been uh, contending with uh, the last uh, couple of days of apparent energies. I don't know if you can relate to that. <laughs> we all, <laughs> yeah. Right? I can relate, <laughs> definitely. So uh, how you been doing? I mean, uh, I haven't talked to you in what, a couple of months, but uh, I, I talked to Ethan a few days ago. He yeah, was, he was yeah. Just, Good, you know, busy as ever, multiple projects and lots of different focus, but you know, he and I both enjoy that. <laughs> so right. stay busy and stay creative. So, so you know, it's it, going into these 2020 energies, you know, it's kind of a, you know, a little hunkering down period, obviously, where we're getting really focused on what we're here to do and we're getting some opportunity to work on that, which is kind of nice. So yeah, it's been, you know, it's been good. Yeah. Busy. <laughs> He was telling me about some of the stuff y'all got going in more depth than he had before. Or maybe I was going deeper, but yeah, it sounds really exciting. In fact, I sent somebody else direction today. Um, but uh, so, I mean, are you picking up on anything in particular? Uh, uh, these, you know, last uh, the last uh, few weeks. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of stuff happening. I mean, uh, you know, for people personally and otherwise. Yeah, so much. I mean, I would even go back the last couple of months. There's just so, so many themes. I mean, you know, in a sense, even like before, you know, before we got to this 2020 gateway, a lot of messages were coming in a couple of years ago through my channeling about, you know, this was really going to be the time when the focus was going to be on the collective. And we were going to start seeing some of those hierarchies you know, coming down. And yeah. I didn't get the impression that that was going to be an easy process, you know, mm -hmm. for us, because, you know, really is both a physical and vibrational thing. And I think that's what's making it so, you know, challenging, but also interesting at the same time, because we're managing both sides of it. Um, you know, there's these, these kind of bigger themes coming in right now about, soul fragments and potentials that are coming up and we're, you know, alchemizing and in transitioning. And, uh, you know, we can see it in our personal lives. I think that's really been, um, you know, a catalyst for us to shift into the fifth dimension is that there's parts of our identity that we're commingling right now. And, and honestly, things I think from our past lineages, you know, um, archetypal patterns and things that are coming up right now in abundance mm -hmm. we're just we're like meeting them you know <clears throat> meeting them right in our linear timeline and uh, Ethan and I were even talking about this uh, yesterday over dinner that um, there's some physical you know our physical material carries energy and for us to go through this shift um, you know, really even to be where we are right now, Todd, when, you know, with the Schumann and, you know, so many of us have awakened and we're, we're really vibrating higher when a higher consciousness, a higher awareness, um, we are the ones that are like putting the stop in the door for these patterns, but we kind of have to meet them somewhere yeah. in order to do that. You know, and I think that's what, you know, the, the kind of microcosmic example of what's going on macrocosmically on the, uh, on the planet is really about is we're meeting a lot of energy right now and it's all in how we need it <laughs> you know that it's gonna shift yeah yeah it's kind of uh you know i mean it's it's weird because on one hand you don't want to talk about things to to uh, expand that energy on the other hand you can't avoid anything because yeah. we can't do that in our own field with our right. own traumas or whatever you whatever it is so you, you kind of do, like you said, you kind of got to hit things head on. Uh, and I guess the alignment is, or the grid is laid down at that point when you go, when you go head on. And, uh, but it's really, uh, I think one of the things I'm noticing is uh, there's, there's attachment, of course, we've dealt with this. We've all dealt with attachment, resistance to judgment, but uh, it's kind of like you meet something head on, you, you, you take it in, 
you lay it down and you move on. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Just go on, go on to the next one. You know. Yeah, you know, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I think that's the the challenging part of this transition that we're in now is, is we're learning how to feel, but also to align with who we are and where we want to go, yeah. which is a different concept. It, it's kind of interesting to think, well, we could be angry. Um, we can feel frustrated or sad as we look out at what's happening on our planet, but we can also have the hope, you know, and feel driven to create a different world as opposed to getting entangled. And that's what, you know, when you say attachment, you know, that's the way I look at it is um, when we lose sight of our higher awareness and we let those emotions take control of us, we really are strengthening timeline energies that we don't want to be a part of anymore. Yeah. And, you know, it's just really history that's replaying itself. Yeah. And that's how I truly think we ascend. You know, yeah. we revisit history and we're meant to, meet that history with a different consciousness. Yeah. So we transform it. And that's really the slippery slope that we get into in our personal lives and on the planet right now is being aligned like that. So yeah, we can know, we can feel, you know, but here too, Todd, you know, um, the knowing part of it can get us in a lot of trouble too, I think. And uh, here's the thing that the guides always bring in, you know, these situations, especially collectively that we're dealing with right now, there really, you know, is no one reason. Like we kind of get real linear that we want to uncover, you know, who's responsible, what's yeah. responsible, you know, and that's fine. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, that's fine. If, you know, I question, are we ever really going to know the truth of anything? Because truth is like a, a, a constant evolution, you know, in our, in our lives. And so if, we, you know, we get really tangled up in the knowing, and trying to uncover the truth, you know, that can take us out of that alignment as well, which I think as a spiritual community, you know, that is, is tough for us because, you know, we have such a higher awareness that we can go down a lot of rabbit holes and, and lose sight of where we want to end <clears throat> up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Uh, I really do. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a great analogy and probably reality that you said about the, uh, that's the collective ascension is because if you think about it, it, it really is the same pattern that we have in this incarnation. You know, those loops are going to come back and come back until we make another decision. Hopefully it's from a higher uh, state of awareness. But right. the other thing too, is that like, how, how much do we need to know? You know, exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like, and, and you're right. When it, when you get into the literal part of it, whatever part of the historic narrative you want to talk about, uh, you don't, you're never going to know, right? You, you, you're never going to know. I mean, it, the, 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 what is it? The history is written by the victors, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you just start, well, you're never, you're never going to know. And how, you know, and I guess the question is too, how does knowing help us? Because what the, you know, the guides put it so simply is when we do that, you know, we're expending a lot of currency, mm -hmm. right. To really find out the truth and, you know, to you know, prove, disprove all this stuff. It takes a lot of energy. And really, I think the next two years, you know, the guys were saying even going into 2020, 2021, um, this was really to be focused on the financial system and big business, the hierarchies coming down, right? And we're meant to actually create the new earth. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, things need to dismantle and fall away for, you know, clear the space for the things many of us, I mean, my gosh, have already created because I have to tell you, I meet with amazing people every day in session. They're doing incredible, incredible things. So it's already there, but, but we can lose sight of what's already there when we go back and try to dig and figure it out, yeah. which takes currency away from the new earth. Personally, that's what I think, you know, so that's alignment too. We got to stay in alignment with these, you know, this, these higher awareness, these higher purpose knowings that we have that are really meant to ground right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the disclosure is a distraction. You know, For sure. It's just, it's like, you know, come on. I mean, if we are the object of the mission, you know, I say that we're the, the, the mission and the prize. Right. To me, the, to, to me, the prize is right now. Like, like what you're saying about these people and what you're doing and so many people are doing. It's almost like the, uh, the squirrel, uh, you know, putting food away for the winter. So yes. like when... Babylon Falls, this, for instance, like the, the new system or your, your aspect or component of the new, let's say, financial system, right. you've got it in place, 
while and it doesn't even matter if it's the if it's the vast majority or a small minority of people that are going to be transfixed on what happened you right. know, or, or what's happening or who who did this or whatever it doesn't even matter i think the the uh the the it's almost like the universe is is putting each one of us individually into a space where it's harder and harder to deny it and ignore ourselves yeah. Yeah. you know our responsibilities co-creators and you know, it's, you know, I don't know. I get what you're saying. And, uh, and I think, yeah, I think whatever comes, you face it, you lay down your, you lay down your, uh, uh, your path and you, and you don't look back, just go. Yeah. Because we all know the universe will bring back to us whatever we missed. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, in another way that the guides bring this in, which is it's just kind of like another perspective to look at that, you know, when you're expending currency, trying to chase all that stuff down, you know, the energies we're in right now are really about freedom. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to feel restricted in areas that we are supposed to realize exactly how free we have been all along. And so if you get caught up in trying to free yourself or the collective by going down these rabbit holes, yeah, it really is a distortion. It kind of takes you out of what's already here and how free you already are. And time and time again, the guides have said, and, and any restrictive situation that's happening right now, I don't care what it is, vaccines, you know, I don't know. But we're being challenged to actually uh, embody and bring in the fifth dimension in ways that many of us have been really afraid to do. Yeah. Um, so, so we're going to continue, I think, over the next couple of years to butt up against a lot of restrictions. And you can look at it one of two ways that we're, we're meant to suffer or that we're meant to actually realize who we've been all along yeah. and put that into action. And it's far easier than you think it is really, yeah. you know, I mean, but I think after, that's what's required. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. After all, we are transformers, right? Exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. what is it? What is it? I mean, what does the, the universe do with, from the first breath? It's, it works with the entirety of the universe, you know? And yes. I, and if anything, you know, this whole thing with the separation, Separation is, you know, we first thought was separation is racism and culturism and sexism and all that stuff. But the reality is it's it's a frequency that there's a fence, there's a line just like between these two screens. And and if you're on one side or the other, you're part of the separation. Do we always have the answer? No, but if we have the desire to zero point that, we can get there. We know the universe will support us to do that. And yeah. I think too, that the universe, the, the, the you, me, we, and it, the, whatever you want to call it is, is uh, you said a minute ago, there's two ways you can go with it, right? Yeah. And I believe that it actually supports uh, in a very big way, especially now because of the work so many people have done on themselves, you know, and liberating themselves uh, on a personal, more personal basis rather than the global stuff. But I really think it supports us in, in, in really an exponential way that, that we're not used to. And I think we're seeing little bits of that. And I would imagine in the environment you're in with Ethan and all those great people around you that have a common cause, you've got to be seeing miracles every day, I would think. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Incredible ones. Yeah. I guess, I mean, the new earth is here. It's, you're not going to see it on the daily news and you're certainly not going to see it so much, you know, if you're looking at social media today. However, it's there. I mean, it's, it really is there if you want to choose it. And I think that's what we're getting, you know, I think kind of uncomfortably pushed to do is to really yeah. choose it, um, you know, more and more, to be honest. You know, like you said it so well, because, um, you know, just make it a little more technical or vibrational, um, a positive and a negative ion when they collide yeah. is a neutral. Yeah. And neutral, ha- you know, is where expansion happens. Yeah. So we have to have a challenge, right? And we have to have the other side of that challenge to actually come together. And, and I think that's really where we're at right now is to face these challenges with the solutions. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, the, the singularity has always been, you know, a constant thing. And the guys even said, you know, last, I think it was like early last year, they were talking about how, you know, vibrationally, the hierarchies within us were coming down, which was a huge component of how the outer world, the outer hologram was going to change because how we, you know, believe ourselves to be, you know, worthy, unworthy, you know, higher than, less than, you know, all these different egoic things that we play out, even the way we speak to ourselves, 
some of us have really been working on that for a very long time and that's been necessary. And so because of that, we've set off a vibrational chain of events where we're starting to see that, you know, play out on the planet and and we can see it collectively, right. You know, the, you know, race and gender and, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, I just think it's a manifestation of the movement of the energy really that we're seeing. And if we, if we, like, again, if we get entangled in that, right. So, um, you know, to bring back that soul fragment idea I was talking about at the beginning of the, the interview, um, I just did a course on that, a channel course, a five week channel course on it. And uh, the guides were saying, when we're alchemizing a soul, fra- a soul fragment, you know, a part of us, it, it sometimes has energy attached to it, you know, like physical pain or an emotion. And we might be experiencing that energy releasing, but we get so bent out of shape about the physical pain or the emotion. We think yeah. something's wrong with us, right? We start to blame, shame, judge. And we just grab onto it and put it right back where it was before, right? Yeah. So, so that's really the analogy we have to take to what's happening on the planet is there's a lot of energy moving right now. You know, I think a lot of potential timelines have bubbled up to the surface and, you know, we have to, yeah, we have to interact with it in a way that we, um, you know, want to see it play out for us and for all others. So yeah, I can, I can relate to that. And personally, and then what I observe, uh, two, two things. One, there, there, there's, and I don't mean pain like in the old traumas, and but what you said, it's like when something is cleared, there's, there's a, there's some pain in the body, or you know what I mean? I mean, there's like, and, and, and yes, because I've done it, and, and you get confused and you start to go treat the, the symptom of what is actually a release. Right. And then end up stifling that release and you're back where you started and actually probably in more pain. But then the other thing you said, too, was uh, uh, in regard to the inner hierarchy, which is really a great explanation, I think, because because if you look at how we're built and if as we went into the the self-introspection and we started to see uh, started to see ourselves in judgment, you know, or in a superiority or inferiority position you know that person is such and such which which alludes or you know uh whether i'm conscious of or not is saying that i'm better than them you know uh or whatever but that that uh is what you're saying is that is breaking down as we do the inner work and as a result of that we're seeing a reflection you know collectively right i think that's what you're saying is that right yeah absolutely absolutely you know here, here's another way to look at it so a surprising message that came in once um to me was that when we have these you know massive kind of periods of anger you know we feel that energy in the collective there's more awakening happening because yeah. you know think back to when you were awakening you know i mean for me it was i was a very angry time in my life I, not only was i going through like a personal you know difficult challenge but I was awakening to all these things on the planet I'd never considered before being completely backwards and upside down. And I mean, I was mad, right. But that was the release of energy. You know, it allowed me to really move forward into a new timeline experience completely. And that was a process. And I think we're going through a collective process of awakening right now, you know, collectively. And and a lot of us are here to hold space for that. And that's what I think that neutral is, you know, when we can allow ourselves to feel and be aware, but also know about, you know, have a higher vision for what's coming, that's when we can hold space, you know? And I I even think for us, creating our own life in a very sovereign and free way is how we hold space for others to also have that, you know, freedom uh, as well. And we we kind of tend to think that's selfish, but, you know, I've literally seen, the energetic cords that connect us to these massive events. You know, we think yeah. there's an earthquake going on somewhere on the planet and we're just not there physically. So we're not, you know, influencing that or a part of it. And that could be further from the truth. It, it yeah. really, you know, we all have uh, an energetic connection to everything that Absolutely. happens. Yeah. yeah. And I, th- I think the cliche esque aspect of some of these things that we've heard and said such as you know as within without are actually starting to come home to roost so that you know we're going to be given harder and harder evidence 
that it is uh, reflective in the external, uh, say collectively, but also replicated to your point. The best thing we can do is to build our own field of energy in the physicality and manifest our little piece of heaven because it will be picked up and replicated by other people just based on the energetic, the energetics of it, the magnetism and, 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 and all that stuff. And you're right, because it's not selfish. Uh, it's actually the most responsible thing we can do. It's, a, it's the best contribution we can make uh, for the collective, for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters. I mean, it's, it, it's the best. It, I can't think of another way to be more illuminated, to hold the light or, you know, to, to hold space or hold the light. Uh, as you said, I think there's many of us that are here to do that. Yeah. And, you know, and I agree to, you know, a lot of us, a lot of light workers on the planet, we're just, everyone's so well intended, you know, we feel everything that's happening and we want to, you know, spring into action. And sometimes it's so overwhelming, you know, and I, I've noticed that a little bit in the community and in some of my clients, there's this kind of sense of defeat, like, well, we, you know, obviously we didn't make this happen when, when truly, you know, our ability to shift anything on the planet comes from our alignment first, because let's face it, not all of us are meant to physically get involved in every single facet yeah. of what's yeah. taking, you know, taking place collectively. Like I know personally for me, my mission is to uh, advance consciousness, to further human consciousness, because what the guides have told me is consciousness is a part of everything that's going on, right? Yeah. And so if we can, we can uh, raise consciousness, we're affecting all of that stuff, you know, weather events, all, you know, collective, whatever. But they've also shown me that, you know, a collective timeline is kind of like a speeding train. You know, we're, we're focused attention on it. You know, we are vibrating in alignment with it. It goes faster, faster, faster. But if you can hold peace in your personal life, you're kind of, um, you know, putting these speed bumps on the train tracks. Yeah. So that we're slowing down the speed of, of collective realities. And that's really where it's at. Yeah. Because if we can stay <clears throat> right, calm, aware, present, and hold that peace, we think, again, we think, well, we're going to meditate on peace when someone else is suffering. Absolutely we are, because that's how we slow down those speeding trains and yeah. also make a difference, you know, vibrationally, energetically. Yeah, that's interesting, too, because, you know, we've all had those instances where you get like in a car wreck. Yeah. You know, or you're on your bike and you're falling off and, and everything slows down. Right. You know, right. It's the same, I, I can see what you're saying. It's the same type of thing, you know, because because at that point, when something like that happens, our awareness expands huge. Yeah. And we start to notice everything. You know, I think there's that uh, method they use with uh, Dianetics the, mm -hmm. where they go back and it's the, it's the smell and the sound and right. you know, the feel of the ground. So our our. Uh, senses are, are like hype you know they, they go into like uh meta phase right mm. and, uh, but i can see where where this applies because one of the things we've talked about this on the show uh, over the last you know few months and, and even before where time gets like really fast and then slows down and really fast and then slows down and i think that slowing down is, to your point is is a clarity and and many other things i mean like an energetic column of strength as well you know but yeah. i like that run that runaway train thing that that makes a lot of sense because it does we have we had been collectively on the hamster wheel or on the conveyor belt or whatever you want to call it i mean you know we all had to snap to that mm -hmm. so uh now when you talk about your guides are they and i'm just curious it's not sure. you know but are they um uh, a specific representation from a specific quadrant you know of the multiverses are they uh, a conglomerate <laughs> oh interesting question you know I'm, I'm getting new insights on this all the time um i connect with so many different guides and beings and I, you know i've kind of come to this um awareness it really through a recent channeled course that i did about the oversoul i really believe that i have um direct access and alignment to my oversoul and I yeah. tap into the Akasha field. And, you know, even when I'm channeling, it's kind of interesting. I have this GPS around my crown where I have all these different beings and collectives and races. And I really think what it is, is it's a, it's a quadrant of the Akash, the Akashic records or the Akashic realm. 
that I'm tuning into, that I'm identifying with a specific race, ascended master, right, uh, teacher, whatever that might be, right. uh, but drawing from them some knowledge that I'm bringing in for the planet um, because it's pretty massive. You yeah. know, and that's what I've come to is, gosh, the, the Akashic field is massive. Yeah. <laughs> we can tune into whatever we want. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's varied. And a part of that, that that a lot of people forget is, you know, we're contributors to the universal Akashic records. And what is happening here is important to things that are happening in other star systems and on other planets you know, and uh, yeah, like we, we actually support there as much as we support here, which people kind of tend to forget. I mean, or think it's, you know, we're the, the low rung on the totem pole, you know, in the universe, which I don't think is necessarily the truth. No. And I think you're, uh, yeah, a couple of things. One is, first of all, if, if that wasn't true, you know, we, we have a tremendous amount of help here. I mean, there's too much intel coming in, too many, too many dimensional experiences and uh, divine episodes around the world. And, and, you know, we know there's a huge team there, probably the same element that you and others like you tap into. And I love what you said, too. The second thing uh, in that, you know, you're you're you've done something and people like you've done something to the point where you've opened that up and you've got you've got access to really to everything you know so well i would imagine i would imagine that was an evolution probably at the beginning you're probably like so and so speaking to me and so and so speaking to me but but you actually in my opinion you have a handle on it you're like wait a minute this i'm what i'm dealing with is what did you say it's huge right? it's you it's massive yeah. but, you, but you know what it's happening on the planet too with everybody i mean just i can't even tell you how many people i've had in session who are, you know, same thing. And I think it's an oversoul activity. You know, we really not, we have not for a very long period of time uh, been fully connected to our oversoul, what I call oversoul container. It's kind of like a, you know, straight to source um, uh, activity. And yeah. it, it, it's confusing at times, I think for people too right now, the amount of access that they have and astral activity that's going on. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what's super beneficial about it too, because we can, you know, I'm gonna go back to soul fragments again, because this has yeah. been such a huge topic, is the oversoul is what I've learned is it, it, it actually works on our behalf. So what it does is it draws parts of our soul from other dimensions and timelines that has knowledge to help us now. Mm. And so we might not have, you know, conscious awareness of that. Like, oh, you know, my Pleiadian self is working on a project that, you know, has some, you know, relationship to what's going on now, but we'll get insights and downloads and ideas, right. Yeah. And gifts and abilities are just coming to the surface in number. And I really think it's an oversoul activity. So I, I think what I've learned about myself is I've had that access to the oversoul and it's, you know, it's constantly um, expanded for me, but I think it's happening to everybody too. You know? so, and so like people talk about, of course, the higher self, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I have heard the term oversoul. I think yes. a lot of people would put it like oversoul, higher self, and then human aspect. Yes. Um, but, to, but, but from your perspective or your experience, what, what, what would you, how, where would you put the, what is the oversoul? Is that, is that like a higher self of the higher self? I look at the oversoul as like our universal self. Mm. Um, so, you know, God fragmented it itself into a source field. Mm. And we are fragments of that God that are assembled by an oversoul and known by, observed by an oversoul that can organize that for us because we're in a linear physical timeline and we don't really have the ability to, nor do we need to know that much information for where we are here. Um, or we haven't, we're just evolving to now really. Um, but the difference between the oversoul and the higher self is I see the higher self as more of an earthly container. So okay. um, the, the higher self is a collective entity or organism. It's really where our sense of unity consciousness as humans comes in, but it also helps us to retrieve information from other earthly incarnations and soul contracts and things like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so in your work with uh, clients, you said you made a, a reference that the dimensional, astral, et cetera, activity is, is on an uptick. Yeah. Um, uh, are, are, are people, are, are, is this new to these clients? Are they like coming in going, whoa, mind blown? Like, you know, <laughs> can you help yeah. me? Yeah, these, well, it's, it's across the board. So I, I have to say, I work with a lot of people who've been in this movement for a long time. Some of them have been healers for years, intuitives for years and they're upgrading massively. So they're bringing in new gifts and abilities. And, and one of the one that's been, it just kind of blown my mind is um, seeing the energy. A lot of healers are actually seeing a lot of reptilian or arconic energy, dark energies or entities. And um, the message is clear every single time. What they're seeing is clearing, right? So sure. people are kind of freaking out because all of a sudden, they're tuning into this dark energy and they're like, what am I supposed to do with this? Is this, you know, people have energy that they're sending me or they're, you know, they're in fear of it. Uh, and the guys are saying really, um, again, this is another Schumann, right? The, the vibration plan is so high. And those of us who've been really tuned in and using our technology and our gifts in this way, um, we are seeing energy move really fast. Yeah. Um, so that's been a huge one. Um, I've had a, a lot of twin flame astral relationship meetings and things like that, that are blowing people's minds. So, you know, and the guides alluded to that as well, that this, you know, we'd be walking into a time where cosmic family reunions on earth were going to be taking place, uh, as well as, you know, twin flame relationship and partnership kinds of, you know, contracts. But I'm seeing and hearing about a lot of astral relationships with wow. people who aren't in the same geographic location, which is kind of crazy, right? Mm. Like uh, people are meeting up in the astral realms and finding out that people they're meeting up with really are here on the planet right now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no, so that's, 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 that's a powerful thing. Yeah, I want to follow up on that in uh, the, the, uh, the uh, reunion thing, but, but yeah, because uh, of course, like Morgan and I's story is there, there's others out there that have had this because you know a lot of people have met right in the internet age, and we had and of course we met, uh, you know we both had uh, I guess premonitions or something like that, but there was a lot of astral activity, intimacy, yeah, uh, you know, uh, yeah. work like like you know pulling up uh, sacred geometry and things like that. But you're saying, but we had met, we had connected, but you're saying there's people coming in, they're having these astral interactions, and then they're discovering, oh, this person actually lives here. I mean, it actually incarnated <laughs> yes. on the earth. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's across the board. I mean, people are, are meeting in physical and then having intense astral experiences with each other. Just, you know, people that are just, you know, kind of perfect strangers that are, you know, meeting somewhere. Um, but yeah, I have had actually three in the last couple of weeks where people are having astral conversations and relationships with people before they've met them in physical. Wow. That's, that's a good yeah. sign. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Barb Bradley, Barb Bradley says she can vouch for that. And, and, and the reason I, th that I'm really uh, intrigued by it is I've had people contact me you know, yeah. as we all do, and you know, they, and because of the content of the shows, and, and and some of them will say, you know, I've I know where mine is. He or she is on a ship, uh, on another planet, in another dimension, but we get together all the time. Right. But to hear that they're meeting, because there's been the other the other talk uh, about walk-ins or drop-ins oh. or walk-ins. Yeah. Where uh, they were off planet. They drop in and then they meet, but the the fact that this is actually uh, you know uh, preceding uh, uh, you know uh, a physical uh, meet you know physical connection mm -hmm. that that to me is very favorable you know because we a lot of times we get caught up in oh this is going on or like you said a minute ago the reptilians or archons are showing themselves or, but there's another side to it as well now this thing with the the reunion, the reunification of soul family. You're, are you speaking in, in the same terms that it's happening in the physical? 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, you know, another message, of course, the guys were saying is when we move into 2020, linear 2020, there was going to be a lot of reorganization, you know, people kind of, you know, uprooting and moving and being drawn to certain locations. And, Mm. and I'm seeing that and then they're running into, you know, groups of people that they remember they were with in Pleiades, or they have some kind of, you know, special Mm. assignment or, you know, connection with. So, that and it's happening fast. It's happening really, really fast. So I'm definitely seeing that, you know, across the board. And I, I truly think this is our oversoul. Right. I think our, our oversoul is actually causing a lot of this to happen. But yeah. you know, remember when we have a relationship, you know, whether it's in physical and we have an astral or it's astral and we don't know in physical, a lot of that is about activation. You know, yeah. so, so like when we have a soul partner come in at the level of the earth, you know, a lot of that's working out the karmic stuff and it's, you know, kind of down and dirty, difficult traumas, wounds, you know, this kind of stuff. And uh, the cosmic relationships can be a little bit different because they come in and help us with the energetic, you know, the templating and the, you know, blueprinting and, you know, raising up remembrance of things. And that yeah. can really happen in the astral realm. So So we don't sometimes have an awareness of what's truly going on there. You know, we put our physical definitions to it, but I think it has a lot to do with DNA activation and, you know, a lot of other things. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I would agree. Both. uh, I was going to make a joke, but I'm not going to make the joke yet. (laughs) (laughs) We have to now. (laughs) Everybody's moving around and going to places. And and I'm wondering for people like Morgan, if we're going to actually have a place to go to, or do they have a nomad category? (laughs) <laughs> that's just a joke but yeah. no because i i've seen both uh yeah. you know in our travels it, you know when we there's certain times it's it's like uh a, a, an etheric experience you know mm-hmm. uh it's i remember we went to see a friend uh stay with a friend in, in sedona who transitioned shortly thereafter mm-hmm. Lynn. and uh but when we went in the environment you know there, it was just like an, uh, an etheric uh, interaction. You know, mm-hmm. there were activations and it went on and went and on. And, and, uh, and this has happened before. And sometimes it can be just, uh, you know, just a, a moment, you know, in time. And sometimes it can be for a little bit longer. Uh, I've seen that happen. And then we also had, uh, Morgan and I had some, uh, have had some monadic episodes mm-hmm. when we've connected. In one of those episodes, there was, uh, I believe, a group of 24. And uh, four came into our, you know, into our space, into our field when we connected uh, and, and merged with us. And we knew who they were, which was, but, but to your point, it was, more, first and foremost, it was an activation of some sort. Yeah, something yeah. was something was that was encoded was opened up back up again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that I mean, that's what's happening with the geographic. So, you know, you say you're nomad and I, I gosh, I work with grid workers, gatekeepers who are constantly being called to different locations. And, and the guides are quick to say it's not just because you're doing work there. We're always, you know, when we're called to these geographic locations, receiving something as well. It's advancing yeah. us, opening us up. And that's totally going on, you know, yeah. in the community for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I would, I would, t- in fact, I'm, I'm like, you know, God, I was telling her last night, I was like, the next time we start hitting the road again, you know, for, for a, a wider, you know, trip or longer trip, we really need to focus on some of these places <laughs> because when, when it's happening, we're going through these places. We feel it. We know something's happening. Right. And, uh, and, but by the time you come to your senses, you're already on to the next one, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It can happen fast. And it's, it, you know, I think it's so important too, because what's happening within earth right now is, is really supporting us so much. You know, um, the soul alchemy thing that I keep going back to, it's happening automatically because the energy of the earth are supporting it. It's, it's really pulling up the stuff in us that needs to alchemize and purge out. And so when we're at a geographic location like that, especially if it's a portal or somewhere that our soul is guided to, I, you know, that's a whole part of that alchemy as well, where earth is really supporting us, which I love, you know? Yeah. That usually happens to me when I go to Sedona, I usually have some things come up <laughs> <That's one way laughs> hopefully it won't be like the last time but uh 
So, and then I think too, to your point, I hadn't really thought about this, but because you, you think about, you know, what can we get out into the mainstream, into the, into the collective conscious consciousness to kind of, you know, go through this with more ease and grace. And I think one of the things that you just bring into mind is, is, you know, they have the saying the darkest before the dawn and, but that, you know, when this stuff comes up, there is very good reason. Like you said earlier, you know, there's very good reason for it. It's actually released no different than the clients you have that are seeing reptilians and archons. Right. They're just, they're, they're, they're leaving basically, you know, yeah. it's, it's being released. So that would be, that would be something to, to uh, focus on. You know, I think yeah. you know, just from my, from my standpoint is trying to broadcast, uh, transformational frequencies you know to those that are maybe not in this community that but that by the way i think is growing up a lot bigger uh much faster than any of us thought what are your thoughts on that are you are you because i know you've been in this game a long time mm -hmm. are you are you seeing that is it's oh uh, for sure yeah. yeah lots of new people every day and and you know what's interesting is my channeling can be pretty technical um, you know, it's not really for someone who's just awakening and does, you know, the concepts and everything, but, but I have people come in and say, I don't know why I understand this, but I do, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, they're drawn to the energy of it. Like my, you know, my human mind doesn't get it, but my body understands. So I'm here, yeah. you know? Um, and so that's what, you know, it's a very quick jump, I think for people right now, if they're willing yeah. to let go and, and make that leap. Um, which isn't always easy. Are, are you finding that these clients, let's say the new clients mm -hmm. that are coming in saying, I'm having this happen, having that happen. Uh, are you finding that uh, like so many of us, that it was trauma induced or the information is being presented and they're given the opportunity to expand from it? You know, I, I mean, I don't like to, you know, put people in fear or anything, but I mean, I just, I feel like there's a lot of dark night of the soul with people. Yeah. You know, and that's what this, these energies are really about. And, the, and you don't think it's a negative so much as it's that, you know, the universe gives us a little helping hand sometimes when we stay stagnant for too long. Yeah. You know, jobs fall away, you know, our health shifts, um, relationships change, really quick betrayals happen. And all of a sudden we wake up, you know, and, and I had someone the other day actually who was just devastated because, the, you know, all aspects of life were falling apart. And the message was so inspiring. You know, like you, you couldn't have been where you are right now had that not happened, yeah. you know, to yeah. focus on the path ahead. And, you know, that's what's happening, I think, collectively as well. We're just clearing out and, you know, getting on the path forward. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah. So and now when you do sessions, that's the bulk of your uh, energy work, I think. I mean, you do a lot of sessions. Do you channel every session or is that something that you do now and then? Yeah. And, you know, sessions aren't really all of my work. I do um, channeled courses. So I do group work. I do live events. I'm channeling books. And plus I have the whole flower of life gate in the background, which is another part of the work that I do. Yeah. But yes, I'm a trans channel. So um, if I do a session with a client and um, I'm, you know, completely out of the way as much as I possibly can, oh. you know, it's a what you might see from me on YouTube, which is a download in a conscious in, or a trance stream of, you know, information. That's what's coming out at the client. So I kind of so like to have, go ahead. So you don't have, you don't really have it much recollection when, when you. More and more I do. Um, when I used, when he started channeling, I had no mem remembrance uh, at, at all of what came through. Um, I would say I walk away with an overall snapshot or a picture of what took, yeah. took place. Um, but it fades very quickly because I'm channeling so much that I can't, you know, possibly retain it all. Yeah. Um, when I do live events, for sure, I don't remember anything that I said. I'm always very amazed when I listen back to the recording. Wow. Um, yeah. Those are very intense for me when I have groups and at live events. I don't yeah, have any recollection. Much. That's got to be that's got to be trippy. So trippy. Now, now, are you right? So now you are you are you located in the same uh, area with Ethan and that whole out? Okay. So and um, and so are in in the the bricks and mortar part of it. Uh, 
he talked about several things that that he was involved in or well he's kind of a part of it all i guess and then but some of the things other people were kind of spearheading yes you know? uh are there are there anything uh are there any things that you were uh actively involved in in that local community and initiative yeah well i'm the executive director of the organization so i have my hand in a little bit of everything okay. but we all have our own talents and gifts you know my background comes from marketing pr i'm a journalist so i have a you know background in writing um, and I help, you know, with everything. We have the expo that we oversee, which, you know, I have a hand in. I also work with Conscious Youth in our weekend and wizardry program. So Ethan and I are, you know, hand in hand, but we each have our own, you know, special niche. Yeah. I help work with volunteers and our staff to support all of our endeavors. <laughs> so, well, yeah. So I, I know from talking to him in the past that his story. You know, I mean, like it's it's miraculous that yeah. you know, like we put on the first couple of events and borrowed money and they didn't have, you know, and all that. It's incredible. But and so I know you've been with them quite some while. You guys have been together. Yeah. So, I mean, is there any light you can shed on aspiring, uh, you know, 5D plus entrepreneurs, uh, you know, for lack of a better description, uh, in terms of making this Making a transit, is there a transition necessary from the 3D business paradigm to the 5D plus? Um, is there some hurdles and pitfalls that you guys came across? Is there an evolution to it? Probably a dumb question, but you know, I mean, is there is there any light you can shed on that? Because that seems to be something that's come to the forefront for a lot of people. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I'll say, thank God I had Ethan as I was making that transition because he's really you know, uh, he's just a, a, an excellent mentor and guide for people that are walking through those, you know, business to 5D kinds of transitions, because it can't, there's a lot of aspects to it that are, are really hard to manage and, you know, financial, of course, uh, being one of them. But here's what I've, you know, in my personal journey, because I, when I, you know, I was not, um, I had no idea I was going to do this. This was not what I had planned on, you know, at all in my life. Um, and I kind of went through that implosion of my, my life where the money went away, the house went away, the, you know, like everything I was kind of like shifting. And um, what I found was I was trying to hold on because I was very fearful. There was no solid platform beneath my feet. Everything was unknown. Um, but the more I held on, the, the less the new timeline came in. Yeah. So I had to really surrender and let go of what wanted to leave and the second I did, I will say, everything started to flow. And I could have never imagined, you know, that I would be in this position doing what I do and actually being so supported by the universe. Yeah. I think it's important to know that where we're going in the fifth dimension is an open source potential. Yeah. So what that means is it's focused on service, but it doesn't mean you can't also make an income, you know, yeah. but if you have that solid platform of service and there's something that you're here to open source, that open source is going to create channels um, where um, revenue, in, you know, clients, people, resources, you know, whatever you need is going to come in yeah. and, and it, it's very synchronistic. And so, well, too, yeah. And yeah. too, if you, if you look at the open source format, like yeah. online, right. You know, uh, so you know it it I, I totally agree. I think that's that's it. I mean you you have you come to the party, you offer what you have, like a potluck. And then <laughs> right, and then but to your point, you know, in addition to what you were saying, if you go to open source, if I go to open source and I pull down uh, OBS broadcasting software, um I it I'm gonna I'm gonna have questions. I'm gonna need some tutelage, you know right. what I mean? So there are going to be opportunities and, and I, and I really feel like, you know, I was, and I'm still pretty much, you know, if you like this, uh, we accept contributions. Uh, we've not really set any a price or anything. I'm not really sold on anything at this point. Part of this whole thing to me, Ascension wise across the board is about being open. Yeah. And I was very anti 3d anti money thing for a while. Right. But now I'm starting to understand what the hell is the difference between money and any other energy that we've integrated with. Right. It's all the same thing anyway. So it, it, it may not be, I don't know, it may not be 
a component of 5G plus commerce, but it is in the transition. And I, and I think that's uh, that's been a big lesson for me lately. So I'm all ears for what you had to say. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, it, you know, and that's another thing too. You guys are taking these steps and you're continuing to build and you refine as you go, I would, I would imagine. You refine oh. as you go. And, and like you said a minute ago, the things that need to drop away, you know, present themselves and you're comfortable to do that. And then everything flows in from there. I think if, I think if you know how you're here to serve and you can stay in that lane, yeah. it will serve you well. That's what I've learned. It's easy mm. to get outside of the range of what you're here to do when we look mm. at others and what others are doing and how they're doing it and, yeah. you know, get involved in, you know, think about money and how we think about money. We're, we're re-imprinting everything. That's the way I look at it. You know, yeah. we can use money for something really awesome. I mean, for us as an organization to create such a huge yeah. mission, we have to have money, yeah. but we're not looking at that as evil, <laughs> we're exactly. at that, right? I mean, we're using that as a tool to create the earth that we want. And, and I think you can do that with anything in your life. You can do it with social media, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we can look at, you can look at anything as a positive or a negative and we get to choose how we want to imprint it and how we want to use it. Exactly. And, yeah. And I think that's what's really important to make that shift as well, to get you know, yeah. really in alignment with money. I, know, I like that what you said too about, you know, like, you know, people talk about, um, you know, align with your passion, uh, you know, uh, once you identify your, your, um, your piece of the pie, you know, your piece of the puzzle, uh, just, just put the blinders on and go for it. And, and I think that's, that's, that's it. You know, I mean, it's, you're right. Because, because of coming out of the old paradigm competition comparison and all that, Sometimes we could have a tendency to say, you know, uh, I want to build the bigger mouse trap. You know, we all know bigger's not better. <laughs> so right, that's important too. Yeah. You know, I had an interesting client the other day who, in this movement, huge, huge following. You know, on YouTube, wanting to make a shift, and um, you know, the guys are really bringing in particulars about how the third dimension was still holding on to his timeline, and it had a lot to do with perception and measurements and judgments kind of like how many followers do I have? How many comments mm. am I getting, right? And, and, and it's okay to look at that stuff, but, but if, if it is used as a criteria, that's not taking us to open source. No. It's kind of taking us back mm. into the 3D. It's slowing down our speed, yeah. you know? I so agree. there's all these kind of things that we have to navigate now uh, to make sure that we're aligned with them and actually, changing their definition in a way yeah fascinating fascinating yeah. yeah this is timely for me yeah this is cool so do you have anything coming up that you want to announce or uh, you know yeah. anything yeah so um well our, we have our uh awaken empowered expo that's going to be happening this november here in detroit you can go to awakenempoweredexpo.com we have our weekend and wizardry event which will also happen here in detroit in july you can take a look at our um, um weekend and wizardry.com website me personally, I actually have my first book coming out and I'm giving it out for free to wow. light worker inner circle communities, people in my community. Um, so check out if you're on Facebook, check out the inner circle community on Facebook or go to my website. Um, I, I really am excited to get this material out. Uh, it's a huge transmission that I started in 2015 wow. uh, and my manuscript's going to be offered free of charge. So, so look wow. that up, go to Michaela Sheldon.com and, um, Check me out there. We've got a how, great YouTube how, channel. <laughs> how big is how big is the book gonna be? Oh my gosh, it's so big. Is it's it like really big? <laughs> 400, 400 pages. 400 I'm sorry. Pages? How many? Like four hundred pages? Mm, not maybe four. Maybe three hundred. Yeah, yeah. Still in editing. I'm still in editing. It's kind of like my third go around. I I channeled this in trance back in 2015, almost three quarters with my eyes closed, to be honest. So. Um, it's a massive transmission. It's really all about um, uh, how we were seated here. Um, oh, wow. so it, it talks a lot about reptilian consciousness and how we oh, overcome man. that. Um, so it'll be it'll be really interesting. Man, if I'd have known that, we'd have been talking about that for the last hour. 
That's a whole other well, topic. We'd have to have yeah. another hour on that. No, one. that's fascinating. That's fascinating. I'm a history buff anyway, but but that's the fact that you channeled that. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to read that and have a discussion about it. Maybe yeah, we can get together right. again in a few weeks if you're open and absolutely um, love to have a chat about it. Yeah. You guys, uh, uh, pick uh, pick up the uh, the uh, websites, the Facebook, um, and uh, if you need to get in touch with her and you can't, hit me up and we'll find her for you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for what you do. Thank you so much for sharing space with us today and honoring us with your presence. And I wish you the best, you and yours always, and hope to see you sometime this year. Um, Sounds good. Take care. You take care. I'll see you. Thank you, everybody. Y'all take care.